Beautiful conditions for footy, a little bit of mud in the middle of the oval, but it should be a good old fashioned game of football between two rivals in the modern era. Here we are, players just in their final huddle. With me in commentary today, I've got Nick Cosmi. How are you, Nick? I'm good, thank you, Mike. Um, it's a lovely day, I will say, but uh, might be a bit of uh, wet weather footy a bit later on. It is very muddy in in midfield as you can see but uh, looking forward to this game I love a bit of wet weather footy this is when players get down and dirty it's the real stuff and this will separate the men from the boys South Gaul are such a beautiful free-flowing team hopefully they can still play their natural game around the centre square and deliver some of the football that people have loved watching this season and uh, the last time they had met it was actually South Gaul's biggest win for the year so they had got up by 140 points. So an absolute humiliation earlier in the year. So hopefully with the wet weather footy and a bit of mud in midfield that slows the game down, it's a lot closer. Yes, the Panthers will be well aware of that. They won't be happy with that result. And hopefully they can come out and show a bit of fight today. They, their last two weeks have been great. Against two Gawler teams, they've smashed both Gawler Central and Williston in the last fortnight. So hopefully a good performance will ensue today. Both teams looking relatively strong. Not a lot of outs for either side. As we see the player side in head position now. Looks like Angerson will be heading to the left of screen as you're watching it. You got a tip for today, Mike? Tip for today, South Gawler should win comfortably still. It's the margin will be the interesting Thank team. You. Angerston, if they can keep it to five or six goals, will be a really good effort. But South Gawler are that far ahead of the rest of the competition that anything under eight goals is a really good result against them at the moment. They are a powerful force. And trying conditions here at Angerston, no power. As the opening tick underway, See players immediately diving to the ground. A kick off the ground. See big Alex Roberts tried to pick up the ball. South with just a hack out of the air. Into their forward line. And a kick around the corner from Dean Cutting, it looks like. And just offline. So that would have been the perfect start for South Gawler. But just just offline hopefully for Dean Cutting he can get his radar right he's magnificent when he's on song Angerson with the kick out now Fibiga plays on he goes down the defensive wing and a strong mark taken out there 
Angus and just will, looking to possess the footy at the moment. Can't afford to really spread against this South Gawler team. They read it so well. That kick now. Really well taken in the forward line. Now Angus with this next kick. Trying to find a target inside 50. Not a lot of leads. Patrick White just parking himself in the line of this bowl. There he is with a big fist, unable to defend. Mark taken by Ben Antone. He drives the ball to full forward. Durden comes from behind. His opponent's able to grab the ball. Looking to clear now. There's Lockie Arnold, the big ruckman, clearing the ball there. That's a very low pass. That's sold a bit of candy. Bailey Filky able to work the ball out of defence. Very methodical, Angerston, with the ball in that lead up to their getting it deep inside their forward line. We'll see if that uh, sort of play is going to benefit them for the rest of the game. Yes, definitely. You can't afford to just blaze away against this South Gawler team. They match up so well on every line. As Alex Roberts just proving to be too big in the ruck. Real contest here, cutting, fighting against two players. And strong kick back. I see Tuckwell, he was moved over the ball. Jackson Press doing great defensively there, the co captain from the Lions. Ball just bounces out. That quick kick off the ground is clever. Goes into the mud. Angerson player able to pick it up. He's coming around. That handball finds Jaden Antoni, who kicks around the corner. Ball plugs. Reinke unable to get to it. Strong tackle. Takes that South Gawler player down. He's gone down hard. He's still down. They're fighting over the footy now. Tuckwell over the ball. That was a solid hit. That was a very solid hit. I tell you what, if that was in the AFL, it's probably a few weeks. But oh, uh, that was a what, big was... hit, and again in the AFL, it would be that tackle there, bordering on a dangerous tackle, but he did save him just at the end. But yeah, that hit was an absolute thing of beauty. That's what footy should be about. Players are okay. now they're getting together. They're going to have a little chat about things. So that was uh, Will Falland on the receiving end of yes. that. And uh, yeah, as you could guess, he's a Umpire bit Higginbottom fairies. just trying to calm them down a bit. Razor Ray. See them now. That quick handball off. Angerston just working the ball backwards. That chip kick forwards. Finds Ben Antoni loose in the forward line. He goes with a flying left foot shot. Just offline, a minor score. And that ties the score up at one point all on the Burge Barossa scoreboard. Angus and pushing hard early in this game, Nick. Absolutely, and uh, I think the, the hits really spark some fire for both teams, actually. Really aggressive, this game. This is what we like to see. This is country footy at its finest. This is why the AFL, with their clinical approach, will never quite match up to the atmosphere of local footy. That big kick out there. He finds a contest, spills out. Angus and kicking the ball, hacked back into the middle of the ground, up and under. Mark taken. That's Steve Burton. He kicks the ball forward. Doesn't find a teammate. Bounces now. Player picks the ball up on the left foot. Puts it out in front of a leading player. He's forced to push the ball over the line. That'll be a boundary throw in down there as he managed to get a hand to it before it went out. Angerson with only the one clearance so far this game. Clearances are going to be important today, but there's going to be a lot of repeat ball-ups. That's a bit of a high tackle, goes unnoticed by the umpire. Now a free kick being paid, going Angerson's way, it looks like. Phoebe got to take the ball. He's searching for an option. Going to come down this near side. Looking for big Alex Reinke. 
gets two hands to the ball but unable to claim it. See Antony wrapped up in a big tackle. Josh Whitwer around the ball. Big frame. Saw some funny videos shared by his teammates during the week about his efforts in the gym. He picks the ball up beautifully with one grab. Gives the ball to Press. Press kicks forward. And that's a beautiful pass. Finds cutting just behind his defender. Read the ball beautifully. So he'll be going back to take a set shot on goal from maybe 25 to 30 metres out. So number 62 this year, Dean Cutting, leading the goal scoring. Has had a really good year. Had a big week last week. I think 15 goals from memory. And really extended his lead in top of the goal kicking. This will be an interesting one for him. He needs Ten to nail week. this. Goal umpire moves a bit to the side, so just offline. Cutting has a propensity to be offline a bit if he misses early shots. T generally, if we see him nail his first couple of set shots, he's lethal for the day, but... If he misses those first couple, he has a tendency to go with one goal five or one goal six. Angus move the ball out. Jack Miles now finds a player into the middle of the ground. It's a good pass. Fibiga now. Ball coming down the wing. Reinke's found some space on that outer wing. Big left footer. This next kick's the one that'll test the Panthers. He goes short. He finds a marking player. Handball comes back. Kick around the corner into the forward line. Antony flew from behind. Probably spoiled his own man in the end, but he cleans up, gets that handball out. Durden takes the ball, but he's wrapped up immediately, driven into the ground. No chance to get rid of it. The umpire says, I'll have it. Razor Ray Higginbottom. Adams with a tap. Comes straight to Whitwer. He goes down the line. There's a plethora of Lions players waiting for it. Free kick, Anderson for last touch out of bounds. They go long towards half forward. Lions player held his position well, couldn't bring the mark down. Jay Shannon now has got the ball, he's wrapped up. Umpire says holding the ball, play on. They go looking for a target. He slides under that. Umpires paid a free kick over the shoulder. Probably more of a tunnelling situation. Cutting now, looking for someone up forward. He goes across. That's well cut off. Angerson player able to take the ball. He goes to the outer side. He's got a target. He finds him. Low pass. Looking for Antony. He cleans up, gets onto the left foot. That pass goes astray, hits it to South Gawler defender. They're moving the ball now. Bit of precision through the middle of the field. This next kick's important. Puts it up high and well read in defence. Just not clean enough going forward the line so far. You've just got to be a bit more, bit more composure Mark, going Ned forward. Grieve, one of the youngsters coming through the Angerson system. Spent a bit of time down at Central Districts. But yes, the Lions haven't been as clean as we're used to. Angus and working pretty hard in defence. Coming out now, Anguston. Player dives to the ball just off his fingertips. It'll trickle over the boundary. But yes, Nick, South Gaul are not as crisp as we're used to. And they were a bit slower last week, uh, I believe. Yes, they were a bit slower last week. They only led Kapunda by uh, two goals at uh, quarter time last week. So... Slow starters, but they do work their way into games. Yes. But perhaps the wet conditions not really suiting the Lions who play that fast, free-flowing form of footy. Yeah, it'll be able to win in multiple Roberts ways. Roberts, too tall in the ruck, gets a tap down, goes straight to a south player. Shannon now with the ball. He tries to kick around the corner. South player spoils it and grabs it himself. 
sends it deep, finds a player. Angerson able to mark. They bring the ball out. He he finds Jake Hood, just shy of half back. He's coming down the line looking for Reinke. Roberts was just behind, a little out of position. South with the cleanup. Now Whitwer handballs off. Finds a teammate. He's driven the ball right to the half forward line. Bounces in dispute. Plenty of South Gawler players in the area. A and a ball out on the outer side. I'm oh, sorry, a ball up. Just inside the boundary line. So umpire Randall Merch, the king of the Falcon. And some player grabs the ball, ducks back in. The umpire had already blown his whistle, it's out of bounds. So boundary throw in almost in the same position. Brody Hudson in the ruck up against Roberts. Angus and win the tap. Comes down. They've got a player in Jaden Antoni. He's clear. Puts the ball on his boot. Jed Durden is very well defended. Paddy White on the ground. Durden outwits both of those. Went for Reinke. Reinke was spoiled. Comes around. Tuckwell now on his left. Flying shot on goal is just off to the left. So, really good entry for the Panthers there, putting a bit of pressure on. Even though South Gaul had the greater numbers, Nick, they were unable to really bring the ball to their terms. Correct, and it's uh, Angerson putting Jack Miles at uh, centre half back as the loose man. Conversely, at the other end is Paddy White, who uh, with his slip almost gave up a goal. He's got the ball yes, now. Paddy White, probably the best defender in the competition was in the state squad but ended up not playing in the state game last week. Several of the, two of the Barossa Light and Gawler players that were in the state team opting to choose to play for their own home clubs rather than the state side last week. It's an important time of year. Lee Rizik from Barossa as well as White played for their home clubs. Flynn Pisani from South did line up for the South Australian team. See Roberts on the ground. He's got arm over his shoulder as he tries to get up. The umpire says, you were wrapped up before that. I'm not going to bail you out. Roberts with the tap. Comes down to Steve Summerton. He gets the ball forward. That tackle from Antoni, not enough to stop him. Summerton now with the handball back. Up and under. Durden set himself under the ball. Unable to bring it down with under pressure. We see Ben Burgermeister battling hard at the ground level. He's a bit of a mad dog. Summerton now going against two Lions players. Wraps one up, making sure the ball wasn't going anywhere, but a free kick paid. That was a Daniel Golding. Though. Daniel Golding moving the ball. He finds White. White goes with a little chip kick. Finds a teammate in the middle of the ground. That's Burton. He's reliable. Ball goes to a clear space on the outer side. Angerson player picks up. He's pushed over the line. So we'll have a boundary thrown almost on the half-forward line for South Gawler. They've done really well, Angerson, to really clog up the, the centre third of the field, really pushing that zone across both sides and being able to restrict that fast movement. Yes, they've really managed to contain the ball pretty well. Angus are now moving the ball out. Tuckwell. Goes on the left, goes to the outer wing, finds a teammate. He's marked that just inside the line. Quick forward kick, finds Murphy. He goes forward. Paddy White was in the way, but he spills it. That little kick from Antoni goes forward, finds Jay Shannon. He's hacked the ball back to the goal square. He had Durden standing there. He picks it up, kicks the simplest of goals for the Panthers. 
and that's the first goal of the game to the home team and another goal for Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. It was a really good ball movement there and they had the numbers out the back. So a really important start for the Panthers. It is a great start for them, but not clean movement, but they are pushing the ball forward at every opportunity. That's old-fashioned wet weather footy and that's what both teams are going to have to adapt to today. Another ball up in the middle, south with the clearance. They were looking for Tommy Clements, who's a real dangerous forward. They have a ball in on the outer side, just inside the 45 metre line. Which at Angerson here it's a 45, not a 50 because of the dimensions of the oval. Ball comes around, South Gawler looking to pick it up. Angerson get a free kick, they play on. See Hood now with the footy. He chips the ball up. Reinke under the ball to seize it over the boundary line. It's uh, Brody Hudson who's playing the loose man down back Did for South currently. Interesting role for him and he's been swapping in the ruck with Arnold so they're floating back there together and I think that's going to cause Angus from all world all kinds of problems today. See the ball going forward now for the Lions. I think you've uh, you put the jinx on uh, Dean Cutting early from missing that goal and uh, early on saying that... I'm uh, not going to take responsibility <laughs> for that because Dean will hold it against me personally. <laughs> Most forwards are like that, but Dean is pretty keen on a goal. It's just a trait. And look at Phoebe Airy juggling the ball behind his back, nearly a basketball around the back pass. Matt fumbled it in the end, but kept the ball going. Allows his teammate to wrap a player up. But cutting, it's just a tendency that I've noticed in Reece, over his career in the BLG that if he gets his mindset going early, he's hard to stop. This ball heading straight for Paddy White. He tried to straight line it. Ball eluded him with its bounce. They're in the mud now, scrapping hard. Bit of mud wrestling. He's not happy with the treatment he received. He's letting his opponent know about it. Paddy White's going to have a huge say on this game today, either way. And some players wrapped up, tackled around the head. He gets a free kick for it. Looking for an option. He's coming down this near side. With Jay Shannon, he's behind White. Roberts drifted in from the side, took a big, powerful mark. He's the biggest player on the field. That pass, a real Ruckman's kick up and under. Durden came from behind defensively. White tried to grab the ball. He was wrapped up by Antoni. So we'll see a ball up in the forward pocket for Angus. And now the Panthers pushing forward yet again, just knocking the ball with everything they've got. Ball comes to ground. South able to pick it up. That clearing kick. It's in play. Roberts unable to take the mark. He had both hands to it. The umpires found a free kick going Robert's way. I'm not sure what that was for. I thought it was fairly clean defence. He gives the handball off, finds player. He tried to slip back inside. That mark is taken there in defence. That's Brody Hudson. He's the player you're talking about, Nick. He's drifted back. He goes across goal. They had the chance there to really intercept that ball, but uh, gave away a free kick there. So trying to move the ball on now are the Lions. Goes that long. That's a real long kick. Probably doesn't suit anyone. Comes to ground. Angerson now by hand. They're bringing the ball forward. Pushed over the boundary line, so we'll have a boundary throw in almost on centre wing on the outer side. South Gaul have settled into this game, yeah. A bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking 
for a bit. Uh, well, it, they are unsettled, but they haven't really showed any poise yet, which is yeah, what we know them rigid. for. They've been a little rattled by Anderson's intensity early. The Panthers have been playing at a high level lately, and I think their confidence is up. Their tails are up, and they're playing in front of their home crowd. I think there's a little bit of belief. And everyone's saying, you can't cause an upset. Their response is, why not? You see Ben Bergermeister heading to the bench. No, it was Henry Ratcliffe. He's replaced by Bergermeister. You see the ball wrapped up on the outer side. A lot of big tackling going on here today, Nick. This is really what we like in community footy, isn't it? It's muddy, it's wet, it's physical. It's good old-fashioned footy. footy. And the power is out here at Angston, so there won't be any warm showers for these players at the end of the game, unfortunately. We've got a regional power outage, so we are getting through on battery power for the broadcast today. Thanks to Sam, who's gone through all kinds of nightmares, but he's held it together. And we get a thumbs up from Sam, which is better than the normal hand signals I get from him. That still is a hand signal, though. It's a better one than what I generally cop. <laughs> Angerson now, they've got the ball in the middle of the ground. Drifts it forward, that's kick. Antoni was moved under the play, well defended. See Burton now, he goes, tries to go forward. He's found an Angerson player in Miles. Miles goes into the middle of the ground. He finds the big ruckman in Roberts. Roberts comes back this side. That ball's up and under, and it really favoured Burton. And he's taken out by Fevigo with a late hit. I made him work for it. He now finds a player right here on the boundary. That ball directed to centre half forward. Well defended underneath. Callan Loki. Miles now fighting one on one. And he's caught holding the ball. Couldn't get rid of it properly. Sort of let it bounce off his chest. So South Gore fashioned themselves a shot on goal here. It wasn't pretty, but they found a way, Nick. They did, but uh, what, what's uh, baffled me a little bit is that the umpire actually hasn't given the advantage when there was a shot on goal right after the decision was made. So they've actually gotten out of jail a bit there because it went through for a point. So they're going to have another <laughs> shot almost here. Generally, the umpires will do that, especially if it is a point. Daniel Golding lining up for goal now. He's probably on the 25... As the siren for quarter time... The makeshift siren sounds for quarter time. Golding goes back and slides it. Actually, it looks like it might have been just to the right. The umpire said nice it was work. okay. It was over the post. So he's paid that a goal. That's... Great work from the goal umpire. He's in the best position. And that's another goal for Ray White, Craig Moore. And South Gawler's first goal of the opening quarter comes after the siren. No one would have predicted that. Well, has there been a point in... Uh, well, there has been a point, but uh, it hasn't been one in a very long time where South Gawler have been this close at a quarter break. It was close last week against Capundra. It was two or three goals in it, but here we are. Quarter time on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. Angerston, one goal, two, eight. Tied with South Gawler, one goal, two, eight. This is really tight footy for both teams and neither team willing to give up any loose play. There's no free-flowing movement of the footy and that's from players being able to get down the ground and work hard across. Absolutely, and I think it's more so because I think Angerston would have more of the footy if we were counting stats you would see that he's had more of the footy so far so they've really played the game on their terms which has been slow and methodical and they've been able to have control South Gawler as, as we've said they like to play a, a very fast brand of footy which is kind of hard on the, this surface and with this weather so we're going to see how they adjust I assume they should bounce back very well very quickly Yes, it's very much contested footy one-on-one, -on -one, and I think Angerson are really happy to do that. And I think for Angerson, if you, if you look at this from a, a season overview standpoint, you know, they're, they're equal fourth, just behind on percentage. So it becomes 
a very much of, well, you know, we're in the hunt right now against the best team in the, in the competition. So a win here would go so far for them having a chance of, of playing finals. Uh, finals is there mathematically, but only barely. I don't believe that it will happen, and I don't believe that making finals will really benefit them this season because they would only be making up the numbers. I think South, South Gawler own that fourth spot now, and I think they're going to hang on to it, and they're good enough to play finals. I think they can actually win the first final, South Gawler. So, sorry, Barossa Districts. And Anguston, I think this hasn't been their year. But to finish off with a few wins will be really good for their confidence and momentum going into next season. Well, you don't think with... Uh, so they've got one game left after this. A win this week against the best team brings a lot of momentum for what they've had last week, then this week carrying through. You don't think that's going to maybe jar them forward? They are equal fourth on wins. They are behind on percentage. Percentage is a massive problem for them at this stage. Barossa have got a really good percentage. I don't believe that they will get through. I think that the Bulldogs will be able to hold on to that fourth spot. No, I think that the Bulldogs will hang on to fourth spot. Unfortunately, Angerson, as much as I'd love to see them play finals footy, I don't think it's going to happen. And I think that it probably is a fair reflection on their season if they just miss out. There's been so much nearly about their season and I think a reset for next year is probably the best that they can hope for. Wouldn't it be a good story? It would be Wouldn't a, it be a good story? It would be a great Cinderella <laughs> story and I'm not sure if there's a big enough pumpkin to fit 22 of them in to get them over the line. <laughs> but I guess you can only dream and I guess that's what footy's about. It's that little bit of hope. It's the hope that kills you though. It can. It can. But um, I think, well, if we flip this for South Gawler, I mean, you assume they, they would finish top from now, even if they do drop a game. They've got plenty of percentage to be able to buy them enough room to finish top. But sometimes it's the old, you know, you are due for a loss to yes. maybe spur you on and maybe say, well, this is what we're not doing so well. This is what we're going to improve on. Right in time, a couple of weeks out from finals. I did have a conversation with their assistant coach, Mark Brandt, last week and said is there a chance that this could be the game that you could need to lose and his response was pretty abrupt and pretty direct and it was definitely a, a no a resounding no <laughs> no was one of the main words used yes. as we see the players heading back to their positions so this quarter south gawler will be heading to our right of screen against the breeze against the breeze mild breeze if there is any josh whitwell lining up deep forward that's a change for this quarter. He played through the middle and across half-back last quarter. So maybe they're looking for a little bit more dynamism in their forward line. He's a very unpredictable player. And that sir temporary siren is really starting to do my head in. <laughs> it's taking a toll. <laughs> so it's in the middle now. Ball came to ground. Roberts cleaned up his own ruck work. As we see Tom Ryan now... Smashes that ball forward. Ball just plugs in the wet there. Jake Hood kicks the ball. South defending desperately. Lands in the Angerson players' hands. Came off hands. So that's a really quick shot on goal there. That's beautiful work straight away. Looked like Ben Antony, was it? Dylan Tuckwell. Zach Heinz Younger. Oh, you had to help me with that because you didn't know how to pronounce that, did you, Nick? You've got to be a You're local. throwing me under the bus there. You've got to be a local. And I, was, I think you could have had a crack at no, it. No, no, I was letting you were calling. So it was I a lack to, of effort. I was guiding you to that one. I think you'd come off the offensive line after that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to be that smart, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Definitely a flag on the play for you, but <laughs> back in the middle, and that's the opening goal of the second quarter, same as they did the first quarter. First goal for Ray White, Craig Moore goes to Angerston. In the middle again, Roberts really starting to get his hand to the ball here. Angerston nearly got that clearance, but South Gawler have cleaned it up across half-back. And they've just smashed the ball out into space. And that sees the ball over the boundary line under pressure. Electric pace from ben Benison there. Benison from very quick, he, despite missing training during the week. Apparently, according to one of his teammates, he's been off on romantic duties. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> can we can we might have to get some confirmation later of that. Angerson moving the ball back. Jay Shannon drops that mark. He was under pressure. Now we see a contest for the ball. South win it. Coming back. Tom Ryan's parking himself under it. There's three or four other players there. Comes to ground. Ryan tackles the South player. He picks it up. Angerson gets the ball off quickly with by hand. Miles drives that forward into space. Forward brings it to the ground. Durden cleaned up well. He gets that kick out into space again. He's got a player out there. He's wrapped up straight away as soon as he got it. And that's holding the ball. That's a magnificent tackle. That is beautiful football. It was Stephen Summerton, the superstar export player, who's been in great form lately. He was taken down. Flynn Pisani takes that mark. He'll bring the ball down this wing. Brings the ball inboard. Players screaming for it down the field. He goes long. Unable to complete that. So we see Whitwer now wraps it up. He goes deep towards the top of the square. Ball spoiled down. Tom Ryan with the clearing kick. He goes into space out on that side. Ball's in dispute. South player picks it up, gets it to a teammate. They work it well by hand. They've now got a player under pressure. That hat kick in. Finds a player deep on the boundary. So he'll be taking a set shot from probably 25 to 30 metres out on a pretty tight angle, but he should be able to handle this. So this is uh, Daniel Golding looking for his second of the day. It's a midfielder who can kick four or five goals in a game. It's definitely in his ballpark. And that's a really strong mark taken there. Looks like Brody Hudson drifting forward. He was just too big. He was the biggest guy in that contest and just said, it's mine. He's got a relatively simple shot on goal here, almost directly in front. Coming in now. Leans back. Kicks straight through it. It's a beautiful kick. And that's South Gawler's second goal of the game. Another goal brought to you by Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. A lot cleaner since um, Angerston kicked their second goal, uh, the Lions. And uh, coincidentally, that has been since the sun has just popped, it, popped out from the clouds. So... Maybe it's an incentive that they're playing a bit more uh, a bit more cleanly as they did there. It's generally, it, you can't put it down to a statistic, but generally when the sun's out, players are going to feel that little bit better. Just that little bit of warmth on the body. I don't know what it is, but generally you're going to play that little bit better. And I don't think Angerson wants that. They want it tough, they want it physical, and they want it, most importantly, they want it close which is something that uh, South Gawler haven't had much of this year, is close games. No, and I think there we are, see a free kick being paid, going Angerson's way. Benny Antoni at centre-half forward, Paddy White infringing. So just a shot on goal now for Angerson. This is Ben Antoni. Comes in and it is offline. And oh, I think the mark's been taken there. It did look like it. Uh, what, what is the call here, I think? I think it's been called for a ball up. Oh, I think there might so have been another ball hand up there. on it. It's probably good umpiring. So South Gawler get that ball out. They're going to move the ball out to the wing. Jack Miles is pressuring. He forces that ball over the boundary line. So we'll have a ball in on the outer side, almost on the centre wing. Bathed in sunshine, the Angerson Oval now. I was sure that that was a mark. Maybe it did. It looked like it, but we are a long way off yeah. and our angle probably wasn't enough. And I'm going to back the umpire in on this occasion. Razor Ray is one of my favourite umpires, so <laughs> I will back him in. Angerson moving the ball forward. Now South... 
looking to clear, but Benny Antoni, he's on it again. Oh, he snuck it in. He hasn't missed this time. He was pushed as he kicked it. It might have actually helped the kick. He's gone through with a beautiful little running shot on goal, and that's Anguston now with their third goal for the day. Another goal brought to you by Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs, Nick. Absolutely they are, and, uh, well, very good work from the clearance there. Just being able to get it out and a really a, a really nice finish on the run at top speed. A, a beautiful pickup, first of all, which was probably the highlight of it, but then to turn on speed and kick that as he was being shoved, everything about that goal was simply perfect. So two and goals Antony to one. really productive up forward. He's played most of his year off and last year off half back, where he's been very good, but really coming into the four across half forward at the moment. And Whitworth now with this clearance. That's beautiful work. Found cutting and gives the handball off. That flying shot on goal just off line for the Lions. But that's quick ball movement. Angerson can't allow that. That's where South Gawler want to be. Phoebe again moves the ball down the outer side. Poor kick. Finds Burton. He was about to turn around and drive it back. He thought better. He's going to take his time. That low kick now. Oh, it's a mark. That is a beautiful juggling mark from the big man. Chris James, I believe Chris it James, was. the big, oh, he's a real veteran, but he's a big, strong unit, and once he's in front of you, you don't have a lot of hope. He's big. He's all arms and legs when he's in the contest, like a Bombay bus. <laughs> Coming in now. Goal umpire does absolutely no work side to side. So that's a goal kick. That's another Ruckman goal at that end. And Angus and struggling to contend with the size of South Gawler pushing their resting Ruckman forwards. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we've, we've, that was the most recent example. So I think South Gawler's approach has changed. They're not looking for that... Uh, free-flowing style of football. It's more so we trust our bigs to win our one-on-ones and that's what's uh, working for them up for this, this quarter. Definitely, that's what they're looking for and Angerson have got to find a way to combat, combat that. So ball now, Hood able to get the handball off to Summerton who clears out to the half-forward line. South Gawler player just sees the ball over the boundary line there'll be a boundary throw up just probably 65 meters out from Angerson's goal interesting that uh, Angerson have opted not to go with the extra behind the ball this quarter see how that one pans out interesting change in tactic as we see Whitworth tackled as he tried to break out of that contest and then Jaden Antoni brought the ground heavily. Ball up. See South Gawler get that tap. That handball out. Landed at Whitworth's feet. Didn't advantage him at all. Angerson player picks it up. Whitworth wraps him up in a bear hug. And then Ooh. slings him to the ground. That's going to be a free kick going wow. Angerson's way. That's undisciplined from the co-captain of the Lions. Bad work, Bruce. Not real clever. Almost like a, a, a body slam, WWE <laughs> it style. It very well, much was close to it. But the free kick goes Angerson's way. They're driving forward now. Ball cleared a contest. Next one wasn't able to hang on to it. Players wrapped up. So we'll see a ball up inside the forward line for Angerson. In amongst the Ben and Tony, he's pretty much been the best player on the ground so far, I'd say. But you might be confused with me calling his brother Jaden at times. They're twins. No, no, Ben. Ben's been very, very good. Ball coming through the middle of the field now. South lands at his feet. Roberts picks it up. The big man did very well. Angerson pushing the ball through the middle. The ball pops over. Antoni nearly took it, the man you were just talking about, and he lays massive tackle. That's a big tackle there. I do agree that Jaden has a lot of have, has had a lot of the ball, particularly in the first quarter. But Ben Antoni has been really good across our forward, and Whit were now really starting to impose himself on this game. Ran through that contest at speed. The kick let him down a little bit. 
So we'll have another ball up, probably just 15 metres on, but Whitwer has really got that look in his eye at the moment. Some of them with a kick out of the contest. Just bounces over his teammate. Shannon now, he gets the ball. He's tackled, stripped of it as he tried to kick, so that's rightly holding the ball. He nearly got free. South moving the ball across goal. Coming now into the middle of the ground. They're moving the ball pretty direct at the moment. Jaden Antoni out there. He's fighting hard. He's got the ball. Almost threw it to Loki. Loki goes forward and he finds the man you've been talking about, Ben Antoni, with a good chest mark. He reads the ball beautifully. So earlier on, he was uh, just a touch too far. So I'd say this is about the same distance. So we'll see if uh, he'll connect on this one because I think the breeze is picking up towards that end of the ground. So we'll see. And he's a fully paid up member of the Long Sleeve Mafia. Coming in now on the left. Looked good off the boot. Looked really good. The Panthers are happy with it. The crowd's happy. That's a beautiful goal for Ben Antoni and another goal for Ray White Craigmore. Your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. Do you need to buy a house, Nick? <laughs> I don't think I've got the money for that <laughs> right now. Not right now, I'll tell you that much. Joe will find you something in your price range. Maybe a nice cardboard box. <laughs> That'd probably be gone for a bit too much at the moment too. <laughs> yeah, I've got the same problem. But yes, really good work from Angus in there. Just force fighting to keep the ball in their forward line. And just, they're willing a way to find a goal at the moment. Absolutely. And they've still got the lead well into the second quarter. We're 14 minutes into the second quarter on the Ray White Craigmore time clock. And we've got the ball back in the middle of the ground. Umpire Higginbottom, he's trying to find some solid ground under his feet to come in for the throw up. Which is not many. Jack Miles contesting this ruck, which is a strange sight. I haven't seen that very often in his career. Not much solid ground in that portion of the field. He's fighting hard. Whitwer now, he's the man who's going to do it for South Gawler. They're fighting hard. Desperation and defence there from the Panthers. That player smashed into the ground. But Josh Witt were really looking to be the one for South Goula now. That tap oh, goes his off. way and Witt were couldn't pick it up but soccers it along the ground. Good save by the keeper. And he's now fighting for the ball on the ground on the goal line and ends up fisting the ball through for a point. He was hoping to get it out for a teammate. Josh Witt were is fighting his guts out out there. Angus and move the ball in quickly. They find Miles in the middle of the ground. He turns and burns. Looking for a player. He was just under it. Ball fires back. Miles gets in front of it again. He's tackled immediately by his opposite number. Yeah, Angus and just got to slow it down a bit. If the game gets too loose and too free, I think that works to the Lions' favour. Roberts was tackled after he brought the ball to ground. Good take there from Tuckwell. He handballs backwards. And Paddy White in front of Antonio on that occasion, wearing him a little tighter now. He's a bit wary. Ball coming back for South. Handball off the deck. Angerson fighting hard now, just inside the boundary. We'll have a ball up. Probably about two metres inside the boundary line. South with the ball coming back. Phoebe Geary's fighting hard. I think he was holding his player before the ball got there. Umpire didn't see it that way. Miles still in the ruck. He's dragged to the ground. South able to pick it up was Flynn Pisani. Coming back, Loki gets the handball. Summerton driving the ball forward. Paddy White's in front of Antony. Antony goes off the deck. Ball's bouncing out there. Jed Durden has got it. He's dragged oh. to the ground before he could kick around the corner. That's desperate defence. Beautiful work from South Gawler. And one that he'd really like to get back too because it really was a great opportunity to Really an opportunity gone begging for Durden there. 
probably didn't realise he, his man was right on his hammer. He thought he had him beat. South bring the ball back. They're coming this side. They're not going to the defensive side. He sells some candy. Gets an extra few metres. Miles plants himself under that. He's unable to mark it. Miles, Jack Miles, the Angerson captain, really coming into the game this quarter. He, much like Whitwer, has decided that it's his time to make an impact. There's a lot of uh, great players from uh, both teams that um, should be standing up. Dean Cunning is one of them. We haven't called much of his name today. Hasn't had a lot of supply. That well, is Not true. a lot of clean supply. As Jackson Murphy with the ball around the corner. Tuckwell unable to corral that. He's under pressure as soon as he got it. Gets the handball out. Summerton now with that left foot. Two goal. And is marked by Durden. Would have been a goal anyway, but Durden's taken the mark to make sure of it. That's clever play. You can't just shepherd it through and hope it'll be a goal. So the full forward from Angerson, he's going to go back and kick this in the goal square. Certain goal. There we go. That's another goal for Angerson. They extend their lead by another six points. And another goal for Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. But Joey Cirillo will sell your property anywhere you want to buy one. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the kick from Steve Summerton on his non-preferred? That's a 40-metre kick to the advantage. At minimum. He to the advantage of Durden there. That was phenomenal. His season, he was interrupted the first eight weeks of the season. He was injured and then came back for a couple of weeks and was playing on one leg. But his last six weeks has been some of the best football I've ever seen played in the Barossa Light and Gawler. He... If he'd been healthy all year, he would be winning the best and fairest medal by a mile. And this is why he played over 200 games at Port Adelaide and was a captain of the Magpies, which is one of the greatest things any person can ever do. Apologies to non-Port Adelaide supporters out there, but you just don't get it. Correct. <laughs> and South removing the ball now. That kick's really well directed. This next one, this is the one looking for Whitworth. He gets down low. He takes it. He's just outside the 45. Heads long to the top of the square. That's a beautiful launch and take. Dean Cutting, you just said he's been out of the game. Just when we called his name before to maybe a bit more of a... Bit he, more of a, name, a bit more of a call from him. That was great work between the two superstars. Whitworth knew exactly how much weight he needed on that kick to give Cutting a chance at it, and Cutting flew accordingly. This should be no trouble for him. Distance isn't an issue. It's only a mild angle. See what he's got up his sleeve. Oh, it's wide. And unfortunately, that's what we mentioned in the first quarter. He does have a propensity to lose his radar accuracy if he misses early. Big thud on that car on the <laughs> outer side too. But, uh, I don't yes. think there's a scientific explanation for it. The yips has no explanation. And if you've ever played golf, you'll understand. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Definitely, there's the Ian Baker Finch rule. <laughs> Unfortunately, for my case, there's no yips. It's just no good. <laughs> so you basically, you have the yips, and occasionally you might play a good shot. Yes. Well, permanent yips, if that's ever a thing. It's definitely a thing, trust me. Permanently? Yes. It's also known as can't play. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> There's no denying. Angus will have moved the ball downfield. They're at half forward now. We'll have a boundary throw in. Definitely. They've still got their tails up despite that last entry for South. Ball comes to ground. <laughs> Nearly cleared. That flick, that was almost a throwback. Now Miles with the kick across field. Puts it into space. He's letting Ratcliffe go at it. He's tackled. It was the old crow throw. It was uh, very much. Williston's own Andrew Jarman. Yes. 
although that player wasn't wearing a faded tracksuit top. <laughs> That's a very oh, desperate no. tackle from Jackson Murphy. Just some injury news. A bit unfortunate for Angerson, hobbling on, on one leg is Steve Summerton, who's played a really good game so far. Phoebe get pressure and cutting there. South able to reload through Filky. They go deep. And that man down there, Josh Whitwer, has turned it on this quarter. He's trying to make this quarter his own. Demanded the footy there. There was no way that Filky would have dared kick anywhere else. Really good kick. And it was really good awareness as well. Uh, taking the mark. Peddling back, but uh, really good to be able to he is one kicks. of the classiest footballers you'll ever see. Coming in now, the angle won't be an issue. Distance is no problem at all. Little hop. And goal umpire has to do zero work. That's the way they like it. And that's a beautiful goal for one of the leaders of South Gawler. Desperately needed by the Lions. And another goal for Ray White Craigmore. So four goals one this quarter to three goals three in favour of Angerston so far. So for all the work for Angerston going forward, South Gawler just pulling it back a little bit. And we are 23 and a half minutes into the second quarter here at the Angerston Oval on the Ray White Craigmore time clock. Currently Angerston with a four point lead on the Birds Roth scoreboard. And that is correct, South Gawler are behind. Yes, for those who are just tuning in, yes. South Gawler and Jay Shannon with a beautiful clearance there. Read the tap beautifully. Mark didn't quite come off, but they're scrapping hard down there. Angerson trying to find a late goal just to answer back. Reinke with the tap there. South with a clearance. Murphy under the ball. He takes it on his chest. He didn't panic. He's now looking for a target. He's got something on offer. He's Great found kick. him. Big Alex Reinke. He's a left footer. This kick isn't perfect for him. Distance isn't a problem, but his left to right curve probably isn't ideal. You back him in? I would back him in personally. I have a lot of faith in him as a player. He's one of my favourites. But, again, the left foot issue from this pocket is not a perfect mix. Didn't really hit that Very with short. any confidence and it's floated out of bounds on the fall, I believe. Has missed a fair bit of footy with a knee injury this season, so good just to see him back out on the park. And he's one of the leaders of Angerson. Paddy White juggled that ball and it's almost stolen from him by Jay Shannon. And Tony now on the left, back to the goal square, goes over the top of the players down there, runs out of bounds. That's a wasted opportunity for the Panthers. And Tony had a bit more time than he realised. Probably could have settled, almost gone around onto the right and had a shot on goal. And there was a Paddy White uh, clanger, almost giving up another goal. We had one down this end at the first quarter. And we don't now see them very there. often. And it's two so far today. Howie's Comet will be back before we know it. Ball punch, just comes to ground. Angerson with the ball moving. And Jackson Murphy in the middle of the field. That's his second forward entry of the last few minutes. And it's actually a goal, not just a pass. Jackson Murphy, one of the zone players from Angerson, really coming into it. He's been a real pickup for them this year. He's showing a bit of class. That was a beautiful goal on the left foot from outside 45. Probably kicked it from 55. That's a beautiful goal for Ray White Craigmore and keeps Angerson with a good, strong lead almost at half time here at Angerson Oval. I don't want to take too much away from the kick, but it did have a bit of the wind behind it. But nonetheless, a very good kick. But he's, his last two or three minutes has been really good. He'd been quiet up until that stage, but he's the sort of player that Angerson need to sort of come into the game with Summerton off the field. Absolutely. It's uh, a big loss. Now, we'll have to check if he's come back on. He hasn't as hasn't yet. Hasn't come back on yet. He's had massive hamstring, calf and ankle problems all year. So hopefully we see him again today. Umpire Higginbottom trying to find a little bit of dry in the slop out there. Comes in onto the main cricket pitch, which is drier. 
And Whitwer with the handball there doesn't really aid anyone. Jaden Antoni goes off the ground. Didn't really connect. He lays a tackle though. It's another tackle laid. That South Gawler player able to whip the ball around the corner. Finds an Angerson player, removes the ball forward into space. Jay Shannon running onto it. Oh. He busts two tackles and takes a flying shot. Goes to the goal Ooh. square. That was our almost goal of the day. It would have been an amazing goal if he'd come through. The fact that he broke those two tackles simultaneously. But we've got the ball out of... It's a minor score, so South Gawler are able to bring the ball back. Paddy White's got the duties. He's coming down the camera side of the ground. Roberts at the back with a late punch. It was too late, but Mark had been claimed. It's good umpiring. I agree with that decision. And it's ball smothered. Desperation on the mark. As we see, Angus, Jack Miles now. He's had a great second quarter. He finds his coach, Jay Shannon. And Josh Witt was crept a lot on the mark there. He has managed to cut that off beautifully. That's very clever work from the South Gawler skipper. He's asking for lead-ups there. That's a player's taking the ground in a massive lead, possibly over the shoulder. But that was smart play from Witt. Where you don't get a stat for that, but that cut Shannon's options down massively when he wheeled around. It is the one percenters in football, so win game. As we see, big tackle laid there and a free kick going South Gawler's way. It was illegal. They're moving the ball well. Fibigo with a big fist. And that's another big tackle laid. That was Jake Hood. As the horn, we'll call it, goes for halftime here at the Anguston Oval. Really interesting at the moment. Angerston leading on the birds were off the scoreboard. Six goal, four, 40. Leading the premiership favourite, South Gaul at four goal, five, 29. We're going to leave you for half time. We won't have any half time recap because we're trying to save on battery power here with the blackout currently. So we will rejoin you for the third quarter shortly. Please don't disappear. Come back for three quarter time and we'll see you soon.
Oh, you put power. Go to power tonight.
live stream match of the day. We're being treated to a cracking contest here. Top of the ladder, South Gawler taking on sixth place, Anguston. And currently, in an upset, Anguston leading on the Birds roster scoreboard. Six goal, four, 40. Leading South Gawler at four goal, five, 29. Nick, really good first half of footy we've seen. Absolutely, and uh, really surprised that actually Anguston are in front. They're in front at half time, considering uh, earlier in the year they lost by 140, which would take some psychological toll, but that's been swept away and so far so good. So any slim chance of finals, they'd have to continue this and they'd have to win. And we've received some uh, some uh, unfortunate Terrible news, for, news. One from of the Angus inside. The so. best players in the BLG, Stephen Summerton, apparently has gone down with an Achilles injury which will be the end of his season. And if the worst is confirmed, it will possibly be most of next season as well. So hopefully not a, a rupture of any kind, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see, I suppose. Yes, wait and see. Hopefully he c isn't too bad. But Anguston, even when he came off the field, other players stepped up. Jackson Murphy and Jack Miles were fantastic in that second quarter. Ben Antoni's first quarter was sublime, and early in the second quarter, he was the best player on the field. He's been leading from the front. South Gawler, Josh Whitworth turned on a quarter for the ages in the second, and he is trying to drag his team, kicking and screaming over the line, Pisani's which is what good, good leaders do. Pisani's been good Pisani's as well, Pisani's been think. good, coming off his performance in the state game last week. Yeah. Paddy White's been solid in defence, despite a couple of uncharacteristic marks that he's dropped and scores from around the ground currently at Williston sorry at Tanunda currently at half time Tanunda 5 goal 5 35 leading Williston 3 goal 4 22 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard so they'll be cementing that third spot mathematically yes with a win Yes, Tanunda definitely look like they'll have that third spot locked up. I don't think Williston will win another game for the rest of the year. I just think that they've lost their mojo. Last year was their chance to win it, and I think it's disappeared on them. So they've got Tanunda this week. After this week, they've got uh, Districts, and then they've got New Europa. Barossa Districts are the team that have taken fourth spot from them, and they will end their year next week. Mathematically? No, absolutely. Barossa will not give up that fourth spot. They are a very good team. They're well coached. I think there's a lot to like about the Bulldogs this year. Do you think they could maybe nab a final? I think that they are a chance to win a final. They'll play Tanunda in the first final likely. At this stage, I would back the Ross Districts to win that. Do you think they can go as far as maybe meeting the Lions in a final? There Be is maybe beating genuine the, the possibility. Tigers? If they were to play Neary in a prelim final... I would find it very hard to believe that they wouldn't be a chance. But we see the teams just in their huddles at the moment. This second half, 
at Angerson. It's tough, wet conditions. A little bit of drizzle during the halftime break. This is going to be a really hard-fought second half. Stay tuned because this could be an amazing end to this game. And one thing just uh, from the first half to look out, definitely in the second half, the uh, the league-leading Dean Cutting with zero goals so far in this game. 61 for the year. So we'll see if um, he kicks a bag this half, which is not out of his limits. No, it's not. And South need him to have an impact on the game if they want to win. They've manufactured goals through other sources. Daniel Golding's kicked a couple, and they're resting Ruckman up forward to kick one goal each in Chris James and Brody Hudson. But they need that regular avenue to goal, which Dean Cutting gives them. If you're in the if you're in the South Gawler uh, change rooms for that half time break, would you be a bit nervous, a bit anxious by any chance? Just a bit. I'd be a little this bit. This is a game we definitely should be winning. You want to win every game, but. A loss at this time of year is not going to hurt them. And I don't think they've got anything to worry about. As that ruck tap, one by South Gawler, comes straight down to Jay Shannon. He kicks it forward. Bounce eludes everyone, but Paddy White picks it up. He's tackled. Tuckwell grabs the footy off the deck. Knocks it forward. And Jed Durden lays a crushing tackle on his opponent there. That was Jacob Schmitke smashed into the ground in that tackle. South win that ruck contest. And they're running the ball out cleanly. Well spoiled on the wing there by Will Fallon. Angerson's struggling to win that ball. They win it. They kick it to the outer side where there's clean air. Jay Shannon's heading for it. Brody Hudson... Didn't bend over and you, Shannon, was coming through at 100 mile an hour. Now they move the ball. Comes to ground. Jake Hood picks it up. Handball's off. He's got Murphy who goes deep looking for Reinke. Reinke takes that ball wow. cleanly and goes down. That's a good, strong, contested mark. He's going to line up for his second attempt at goal. His first one went out on the full. This is not as tough an angle, not as far out. But this will be the first shot on the quarter for Angerston. As you hear the horns in the background, that's country footy at its finest. That ball floats into the goal square and a free kick adjudicated to the South Gawler big man who was floating back in defence. That's smart footy. Send your big men back. Let them do the work in the goals. Brody Hudson finds a little ch chip kick out. The Lions going to move the ball down the outer side. It's cut off. See a contest on the outer side. Players throw the ball back to the umpire. He's going to ball it up. Something in the first half, I thought Angerson did really well in the ruck. Alex Roberts did a really good job for most of the first half. But the three tolls from South Gawler are going to start to take their toll in the second half. And they've won the first few contests. I think that's going to play a, play a big role in this second half, Nick. Absolutely. And um, Angerson completely on top to start this third quarter. Winning clearances. So we see Jake Hood in the middle of the ground. That little chip kick finds Tuckwell. He pops it up to the goal square. Durden's at the back. He couldn't get the mark. South player goes to ground. Draw, sucks a high tackle. So he's clearing the ball out. That's a good mark under pressure. Steve Burton's been useful today. Adds a bit of poise to this South team under pressure. He goes with a real short kick. Panthers continuing to force the lines wide. Something which has worked in the first half and making them go down the line, not play that freestyle of footy. Yes, Anthony Simpson now. He's right on the boundary. He's got no options. The umpire's telling him to move the ball on. It's really counterproductive to what the Lions like to do. They don't like to be forced to do anything. They're used to playing the game on their terms. That's a massive tackle. Unfortunately, a little bit high. Goes South Gawler's way. Press turns, floats the ball into the forward line. Whitworth unable to mark there. 
Well defended. As we see, umpire blows the whistle out there. It's like a free kick going Angerson's way. Panthers have defended well today. They've been prone to giving up patches of four and five goals at times during the season. Haven't shown any sign of that yet today. As you see, the rain start to come in here again at Angerston. Just what the players want. I'd say it works towards the Panthers' favour. It probably does, but I'm sure they're not real happy about it. They know the power's out and the showers won't be hot at the end of the game. <laughs> it's all worth it if you win, though. But they've got to do it. See, Roberts with that tap doesn't go to advantage. So, Angerston with the extra back. I think it's uh, Ned Grieve back there, who's the loose man. That's another repeat ball up. South Gawler player takes the ball after neither Ruckman engaged it. They go forward, but ball pushed out over the boundary line. We'll have a boundary throw in that four metres around from South Gawler's points. So the line's pushing hard. Definitely South have ratcheted it up a notch here in this third quarter, Nick. Absolutely, and um, they, they do need to pick it up a little bit because Angerson have been on top for the majority of uh, this portion of the quarter. Is that South able to pick it up. He's dispossessed. Jay Shannon now gives it off by hand. That player is smashed into the ground. That's big tackling. And I think clearances are going to become an even bigger, more important part of this match because with it a bit more wet, it's going to be a territory game. That's where I think South's three-headed monster in the ruck is going to come into play. But I suppose to be a premiership team, you've got to win in multiple ways. That's right. You've got to find a way to win ugly. You can't always do it on your own terms. Shannon's spun in the tackle, but he gets that kick away. Jaden Antoni was fighting for it, but he was being held. Actually, that was Jaden Antoni. That was Ben a moment ago. And some players fighting on the ground. See South Gawler now. They've got the ball. That was Whitwer. He gets the handball forward. South now driving it deep. Goes over the top of the player that was intended. Fantastic mark. So Angerson coming back now. Jake Hood's got the ball on the halfback flank. It's a low kick. Finds the player out on the wing. It's Jackson Murphy. Seeing the methodical build up. A bit of a chip around. Finds Nothing too fast. Actually, it's Murphy now. He goes along with that left foot of his. Looking for Ben Antoni. He's at the back. Almost brings it down in a juggling mark. Ball comes back into the middle. That's, That's a, a mark. diving mark. That's a great mark taken under pressure with a player draped all over him. That's young Bergermeister. Ben Bergermeister. That's a great grab. He's much smaller than his opponent. His opponent was hanging all over him, almost like a cape. And he's going to be lining up from probably 35, 40 out. He'll be taking the kick. He's connected on well, but it's just offline. Minor score. And the rain's starting to drift in a little thicker now. It's going to be harder and harder for these players now as the game goes on. The temperature's dropped. The rain is coming in. It's a tr real traditional Angerston day. How would you like to be playing in these conditions, Nick? I've played in much worse conditions than these, but uh, as, a, as someone who plays a key position, it's never fun. No. Definitely hard to take a mark when you can't feel your hands. Correct. That uh, ball going forward. Angerson taking a mark. Now they're looking for the next one. Goes to Reinke. That's a great grab. The second juggle was beautiful. He had to dive backwards after diving sideways. And he'll be taking another shot on goal. He had one not far from here just before. 
and he started to have an impact as a tall forward. This will be his third set shot for the day. Kicks. Oh, he's Goal missed. umpire's not happy with he's it. Missed that one. Just offline to the near side. Really tough to get that decent line and contact off the boot. But Angerson pressing well. They're not letting South clear the ball out of their defence. That's something that South wouldn't be used to. They're not used to this kind of pressure. But as you said, premiership teams need to find a way to deal with that. Absolutely. So we're about to see... Uh, see Josh Whitwin now yeah. grabs the ball. He plays on, runs a long way. Drives the ball down the defensive side and there's a mark taken. Ball goes forward. It's another mark taken there at half forward. He kicks around the corner. Hits spare dirt. And that's a good goal. Kicked off the ground. That's desperation footy. That's fast movement. And that is a great goal for the Lions. A great answer. Angerson been pushing early. There we have... I think it was Nathan Barch. Nathan Barch, one of the older players in the team. That's a real clever, cheeky goal that he's he'll happily claim and he'll make sure that the others know all about that. And a much-needed goal, and it's safe to say it does go against the flow of the match uh, in this third quarter. And it's another goal for Ray White Craigmore, of course. But definitely South Gawler, they needed that. That closes the gap right up to seven points. Such a great game to watch so far, this one. Oh, it's been beautiful footy. There's no imbalance at all. Through the players fighting hard at the ruck contest. Angerson getting that forward. Just overruns Antoni. South player with a beautiful look away handball there. That's clean footy in these conditions. Pisani now. He brings the ball back into the middle, into the mud. Jaden Antoni juggled it. He couldn't take it. Players are now getting wrapped up in tackles right in the mud. This is where it's going to get tough. It's going to get ugly as we see the forlorn figure of Stephen Sumberton coming towards the change rooms on crutches now. Really hard to watch. So we another ball up right in the middle of the ground, almost in the exact starting point of the game. Whitwer holds his player out with his body. Good take there from the Angerson defender. He smashes the ball back into the middle. Got South Gawler, that's beautiful ball movement to Chris James. He's in the middle of the ground. Could have handballed off. Still looking to handball off the way a good ruck on should. Finds press. Press drives it long. That's a huge kick. Comes to ground. Angerson at ground level. Get the handball out. They're now clearing by foot. Wide out to the outer side. It's a mark taken, but it might be out of bounds. It is. Out on the fall. So South able to come back again. That mark spoiled. Comes to ground. Angerson play with a ha handball. I know Miles it was unable to pick up the footy. And South come back now. Heading to the top of the goal square. That's a really good strong mark taken under pressure. Dean Cutting, Cutting, I think it is. He would be right. And he will be taking a shot from directly in front. Probably kicking from 30 to 35 metres. This is an absolute gimme putt for a player like Dean Cutting. <laughs> you have to work for it. And but there it's it home. is. He's on the board. He's finally got his first major for the day. And another goal for Ray White Craigmore. Your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs, and South Gawler hitting back in the fashion that they needed. And you see the you see the Lions that Is time around. That South round. Gawler's first lead for the day. Uh, well, at least until like when it was one and two points early, but they haven't taken the lead just yet. Oh, sorry, down one by point one point. point. So they, they they were when it was like one and two points for the first ten minutes of the game. That's about it, but. Angerson have led since. But one thing that uh, the Lions have done well the last five minutes is they've been able to really find their way through the corridor, and that's 
pretty much the focal point of their game and their style, which has led to the last couple goals, consecutive goals. They've valued possession too, which they weren't doing early in the game. Big tap by Alex Roberts. Comes to a South Gaul player. He kicks around the body. Angus player went to ground heavily there. He's still down. South bring the ball into their forward line. Big mark taken there. He handballs off. That kick down the line. Finds Burgermeister who bounces up, gets the ball. That handball back to a player on trouble. South Gawler pounce on it. Ball goes forward. It's in dispute. South Gawler able to pick it up. Calm as you like. Kick forward. It's touched. Angerson player at, at ground level picks it up. He's claimed immediately. Angerson now able to move the ball with that little chip kick to a running player. He goes long. Looking for Antoni. He's outpointed by a good, strong defender. South now running. That's beautiful down direct play that you mentioned, Nick. But unfortunately, finds Tom Ryan, who read the ball well. Who was just down a minute ago from taking a hit. That kick, not ideal. Went to Fiebiger, he muffed it. South Gawler, they've fumbled twice. That's a throw. That's that's really poor. It's under pressure, though. Mistakes happen now. Miles got the ball. He's gone long. Jed Durden flies. Comes down. South player dives on it. Chase for the ball now. South player's too strong. He's jumped on the footy. Everyone jumps on him. The umpire goes, that's enough of that. I'm going to ball it up. I think it's going to start tightening up a bit this game once again. As we see Chris James in the ruck. He takes the space. South with, able to smash that ball out of it. It's a beautiful pick up there. Pisani now grabs the ball. He runs. He's got a beautiful leg. That's a great pass. And hits his teammate on the chest. That is champagne football from Pisani. Cutting now. Goes deep. Right to the square. He's got a player down there. He marks it on the run and kicks the easiest of goals. Second for cutting. Three goals plays, two points in this quarter. And that was back good with movement the from the Lions. Flynn Pisani took the game on, got the ball, decided he saw a lane, he ran. He's got confidence in his game. He's had a fantastic season. On the back of being picked in the South Australian country team, he goes, I can do this. And boy, did he do it. Lovely. Did kick. it beautifully. I love watching him in full flight. He's a really spectacular player to watch. Here we are back in the middle. Roberts up against James in the ruck. Here comes umpire Merch, the king of the Falcon. Roberts gets his hand to it, doesn't really win it. And South get that ball. They smash it forward. That's a beautiful take, juggled. That handball back to a teammate. Little chip kick. That's clever footy. Finds Daniel Golding running back towards goal. He's going to be having a shot from the point where he kicked the goal just after the siren at the end of the first quarter. Well... They're back on top, aren't they? They're back on top. Their momentum is fully in their favour. This is what South Gawler do very well. Lane's back. He's pulled that a little bit. Just offline. So the minor score. Angerston need to find a way to get the ball forward of centre. They're struggling a little in that area at the moment. And they can't panic as well. They'd be thinking that, you know, three goals to nothing this quarter. They built their performance in the first half by playing possession footy. They need to get back to that. They've just got to slow it down and go through the pro same processes again. South swarming now with their midfield press. Really putting the pressure on, forcing Angerson to defend everything. That ball comes to the back. Goes over Burgermeister's head. He grabs it. He is wrapped up in a bear hug. South really bringing the intensity. Their tackling level has gone up a notch or three. As we see Dare hobbling away from that contest. Angus can get the ball at ground level. That's a good kick in. 
South defender was able to get rid of the, the forward in Durden and then regather himself and take that mark. He now goes down the outer side. Pisani's now got it. He shrugs that tackle. He's just too good. And so and was that, that kick. That is beautiful. That is one of the best passes of the day. Finds Dean cutting on his own. It could be the Flynn Pisani show now. Oh, I think it already is. I think it already is because he has been the anchor, I'd say, for them regaining momentum and the lead. His, his speed is electric. As we see Cutting coming in now, probably the toughest shot he's had for the day. Lane's back. And the umpire's pretty happy with it. Well, but no, a minor a pine. score. That was Paddy White, I believe. Was it? Uh, I couldn't quite see. Yeah, I reckon it was Paddy White. Possibly, well, then I wouldn't be surprised at it being a point. <laughs> Sorry, Paddy. Kicks <laughs> like a cent half back. It's all right. He'll let me know. And beautiful, well read there by Jaden Antony. Everyone else was misled. Tuckwell went for the bowl. He was taken down. You see Harry Ratcliffe, Henry Ratcliffe, smashes the ball forward. Well worked by Durden. Tapped to a teammate. That teammate tapped it back. Gives a handball off to Tuckwell. He runs into the open goal. Dylan Tuckwell has missed that goal under pressure at the last moment. Beautiful defensive lunge from the South Gawler player. And that's the true one percenters. Just enough of the pull of the his, jumper. His coach will know. Just to put him off. And that, that ball, almost marked by Jed Dern. That handball went astray. South Gawler, just too good. <laughs> Here we see in the middle of the ground, the big fella Brody Hudson, he goes with a dangerous kick. It's almost cut off. Pisani now gets on the end of it. Pisani is the danger man. Flynn Pisani, you are tearing this game apart. He's Pisaniing all over them. I'll tell you what, the effort down here, I think it was from Arnold. Yes, I believe Lockie it was. Arnold, the young Just big man. enough to get the tug of the jumper to force that out on the full. Then the transition, he got the ball there, took on one, and then started the chain for that goal. And That's Flynn Pisani is doing something that no one else on the field can do at the moment. He's taking the ball in his hands cleanly and running with confidence. No one else on the field is able to do that at the moment. And I'll tell you what, they call it, They don't call it the Premiership quarter for no reason. This is where the Lions have hurt, been hurting teams all year and they're doing it to Angerson now, but it is the Flynn Pisani show right now. I see neither Ruckman able to affect that tap. Jay Shannon gets the handball out. Went over the top of the, his intended player. Another player picks it up. That player gets it, he's taken down. Good attacking, tackling by the Lions. Comes back to Tom Ryan. He hacks the ball around the corner on his left. That ball's taken over the boundary line. Oh, almost stolen by the player who's nearly sold to the umpire that he kept it in, but umpire was on top of it. Good work from the young boundary umpire. Angus really need one back before three quarters they time. They desperately need really a Really need one back. Just to go into As the we break. are 20, nearly 23 minutes into the third quarter on the Ray White Craig Moore time clock. And they're going to get a chance now. This is the it. Ball They've going got the free 50. kick. Driving it in. Reinke's behind. Needed to be in front. Came down though. That flying shot goes to the top of the square. Durden oh. was going back. Nearly held it. He gets up in the tackle. Handballs it back. And kick around the corner from player there was Tuckwell, I believe, just offline. That would have been a great, much needed goal for the Panthers if they'd been able to manufacture that. They're putting a lot of pressure on now, the kick in. They're not going to give him the room to work with. He comes long. He's going pretty attacking. No one able to get two hands on that. Angerson player picks it up. He's wrapped up immediately. The temperature's just gone up another degree or two. 
It was hot early in this quarter, but it's just become even tougher, I think. Nick? I thought you were referring to the actual weather. Uh, <laughs> I, was I say, wish. Quite the opposite. I wish. <laughs> Jackson Press in the middle of the ground now. He goes to that outer side. That's a move the Lions do very well. They've got that set up where the player will always lead to that spot when the, the ball is theirs in the middle of the ground. That's a good mark taken. He's taken down afterwards. It could well be a 25 metre penalty. And this is really going to hurt because this is now they're going to take a three goal lead. The South Gawler Lions. Yes. So this really hurts. It's the small things in footy that uh, have big outcomes. This is the one that this is going to hurt a lot. Coming in now. There he goes. Kicks the easiest of goals. That hurts the Panthers. They thought they were starting to rest the momentum back, but that's going to hurt them late in this third quarter. That gives real separation for the Lions now. Really pushing the margin out. Almost 20 points. And we are moving into the death of the third, the third quarter. Over 25 minutes in, so we're into time on in the third quarter on the Ray White Craig Moore time clock. 5 2 plays 1 2 this quarter. And in favor of that's the Lions. a. Considering the low scoring we've seen for the game, that is a massive imbalance. Ball up. South Ruckman jumps early. Roberts stayed down. He nearly won the bowl. Jaden Antony now with the tackle, hassling the player with the ball. That player stands up into the tackle and is wrapped up. He tried to break out of it. Merch up, bowls it up now. Both Ruckman wrestling. And there's a free kick being paid. Which way is it going? It's going South Gawler's way. It was a 50-50. They drive the ball deep now. Looking for yet another goal late. Paddy White flew at that. Ball comes down. And just offline. But the Lions really pressing now. They've got the... They've got blood in their nostrils. They sense that Angerson have lost their path a little bit now. If that was a goal there, I probably would have called it to be a bridge maybe too far. For Absolutely. That would Panthers. have been great cliche work. I would have loved it. Angerson now with the ball at half back. Almost too late for them now. It is too late for them now, as I suspected. As the siren goes for three-quarter time here at the Angerson Oval. We're still without power here at Angerson, so we've got temporary siren. We're operating this live stream on battery power and willpower alone. As our camera and or our AV man, Sam, the best in the business, he has had to run and buy some EverReady batteries just to power the microphones today, which I'm sure some of you wish he did. But, Nick, we are carrying on nonetheless. We march on, yes, through adversity. And uh, much like the Lions through adversity today, have uh, managed to steady the ship and uh, take firm control of this matchup, the largest lead of the match. Yes, that third quarter was a thing of beauty from the Lions. Early, they, it was a real arm wrestle, but they have managed to work it and work it ugly. They don't mind it. The ugly ones are sometimes better. But they've managed to work that well and... They've just shown that the reason that they're a premiership team and they are the premiership favourites again this year is that not everything can be done on your terms, Nick. Absolutely not. And uh, today is a prime example because of uh, the first half particularly. It's a bit slippery. It's muddy. So the game slowed down. Angerson had firm control of the ball, chipping it around, moving around in their fashion. So they've had to overcome it, and it looks like they have. And um, for Angerson, I'd really love to see... Because I'd, I'd get the feeling now in the huddle would be, well, they're probably going to run away with it. So how do you combat that and have another effort to be able to really make this a match again? There's a lot of pride in this Angerson team. And I'm sure that the conversation from Jay Shannon at the moment will be 
we are not going to lay down. We're in front of our home fans. We are not going to lay down and just let them roll over us. They smashed us earlier in the year. Let's make them earn this one. Let's try it. We can, we're can. we still in this game. We can win it. They're at home. Why wouldn't you? It's got to be treated as like an elimination final. Because it if does. they lose it, it's pretty much... That's pretty much it mathematically. Absolutely, and that's what I'm expecting to see from the Panthers. But from the Lions, they're going to want to go out there and they want to flex their muscles and win this by five or six goals. They don't want to win by less than ten points. For them, that's not good enough. Their standards are right up higher than that. Particularly with the full momentum of of this matchup now, they'd be expecting to cruise home with this this match and uh, go into next week. Maybe not in fantastic form, but... uh, Nonetheless, good last quarter, something to carry through. Yes, that's what they'll be looking for. And scores from around the grounds at Tanunda on the Birds were off the scoreboard. Tanunda really taking over at 10 goals, 7, 67, leading Williston 3 goal, 5, 23. So Williston managed just one point in that third quarter. Tanunda kicking 5 goals, 2. So the Magpies well and truly on top of a sinking Williston ship. Really, they've really self-combusted, haven't they, um, Williston? Self-combusted really badly. Yes, definite implosion happening down there at Elliot Goodger. But again, some of us we don't, we're not surprised at that. Unfortunately, it looks like their window may have closed on them for finals, for sure. Yes, well, for possibly their premiership window for this period. They got so close last year. That were leading by nearly 10 goals at half time and then gave up that game to South Gore in a classic grand final. Sometimes that can haunt a club. It's the bigger results and uh, the big upsets and sways and finals that really can carry over for a team and the club. As we see the Angerson players now breaking their huddle. South Gore still in front of the board. I'd really like to see Angerson have a, have a firm focus on winning clearances because Alex Roberts, considering it's been a, a wet and, and muddy game, he's he's actually been really good this game. He's been one of their better players. So I, I think the way forward, if they're going to have any chances through midfield and putting the pressure on early, they need a goal or two within the first five minutes. Yes, definitely. They need to come out on the front foot and win a clearance, get some positive footy going their own way. They need to do that just so that their heads stay upright. As we see the rainbow finishing almost in line with the centre square. Is that where the pot of gold is for the Panthers? I was just about to say they need to find the pot of gold in the next 25 minutes. It's almost level minutes. with the, the centre circle. Can they find the pot of gold? That, it's almost on their half forward flank now. Maybe that flank is the point where the wind could come from. Maybe I'm being ridiculous. Find the leprechaun. Uh, there's a couple of small guys out there. I'm not sure I'd be willing to call them a leprechaun. <laughs> As Jay Shannon, the playing coach, wins the ball out of the middle, going to that flank we were just talking about. Ball in dispute. Angerson player gets the handball up, finds Shannon. He's wrapped up, but he gets the handball away. That ball driven deep. Going to the goal square. Actually bounces through. That's the opening goal of the quarter for Angerson. Is their hope still alive? It's another goal for Ray White Craigmore, your premiership team for real estate in the northern suburbs. But here come the Panthers, possibly. Here come the Panthers. Well, we said it. That was exactly what they need. That was their playing coach, Jay Shannon, just willing his team forward. Got the clearance, then followed up. He got the handball that created that goal. That's what they need. They need that leadership. His desperation, he's a hard-nosed player. Can he drag his team over the line? Boy, I hope this becomes a really tight contest again. Oh, I think this could be an absolute barn burner. That rainbow even getting brighter now. <laughs> it's almost the only light we've got here. We, we can't turn the lights on because we still don't have power in the area. As Jake Hood drives that ball forward, nearly a diving mark taken. Angus moving the ball forward. Picked up now, round the corner. That's a minor score, but at least they're pushing the ball forward. They're keeping the ball in their forward line. Very we good see start. one of the Panthers' former coaches, Malcolm McGrath, walking past. He's trying to choose the best player today because there's a medal named after him being awarded to the best on ground today, as well as the Blue and White Cup going to the winning team. 
but the Malcolm McGrath medal, highly sought after by these players. He's much respected and loved at both clubs. Had a great period coaching at South and it took Angus them to a grand final, really moulded them into a powerhouse at the time. South now looking to clear the ball. They're coming this near side, going long. Hood was behind. He gave away a free kick. He was hanging on. It was easy to see. The umpire was right on it. South with that chip kick go across to the true centre half back. Now they're going out to the outer wing. Just keeping possession of the footy now. That ball bounced. He's wrapped up in a tackle. He's taken the ground. Some players, sorry, the crowd's screaming for holding the ball. A lot of feedback to our left on that decision. Yes, a lot of analysis and advice for the umpires. That ball, handball off to Hood. He drives the ball forward. South Gawler player picked it up off his shoelaces. He was tackled immediately. A lot of desperation being shown by these players. This is what I love in country footy. Tom Ryan couldn't complete that mark. He wrestled his opponent out of the way. Good handball backwards. Finds Miles. He finds a target. That player's just grabbed at his leg. Zach Heights younger. He's okay now. He's got the footy. Funny how that happens. <laughs> Player grabbed the ball. He's wrapped up. Tried to throw it away. There's a free kick given for holding the ball. I'm not sure that was any different to a clash just before. South now with press. He goes long. Ball's taken the ground. Oh. Not sure what happened there. That ball's going to come over the boundary line. We'll have a boundary throw in almost in front of our position here at the grandstand. We have noticed uh, Paddy White in some unfamiliar territory up forward. Paddy White playing forward. I think that's just to stretch Angus's back line. I think they're pretty happy with what's happening forward for them at the moment. They're banking on the fact that they can win it forward and just overload Angus's defence with big talent. And now a ball up almost in the same position that came in a moment ago. Roberts gets that tap, but it comes down to a South player. He hacks it forward. And there's a mark taken. You've got Josh Whitwer. He's covered in mud. He loves it. He's going to be lining up. He's going to be kicking from about 35 to 40 metres out. A mild angle. It's well within his capabilities. Has he got a nail to drive into Angston's coffin here? Well, I'll tell you what. He has done it. Josh Whitwer, you are a star. That's the Whitwer impact, the Whitwer effect. I think Lynx will be coming out with a fragrance of that shortly. The Whitwer effect, it might be a bit stinky, but that's superb play from one of the leaders of this South Gawler team. He is one of the most talented players in country football, in particular in the BLG. He is a genuine superstar that you would pay money to come through the gate and watch week after week. Phenomenal kick for goal, that one. Wow. I've noticed that uh, the rainbow in the background is slowly, slowly disintegrating. Slowly fading, much like Angerson's hopes. Yes, it's <laughs> Yes, it's almost it's gone. That pot of gold is disappearing. Last roll of the dice now. Roberts didn't even go up for that one. He stayed down. South player grabbed it. He's taken down. But clearances. Josh Whitwer. The name in the game, I think, for the Panthers is going to be their clearances. Big players stand up when the game is on the line. Josh Whitwer, he stands up for South Gawler. Says a lot. Anthony flew late. Couldn't get the ball. So I have a ball up almost at centre-half forward for the Panthers. Shannon almost took that. South Gawler player grabbed it. Shannon wrapped him up straight away. Smashes him into the muddy turf. A little bit of anger about it, but that's what you expect in A-grade footy. Shannon grabbed that ball. He's wrapped up by two players immediately and is caught holding the ball. He tried to run through, tried to do what he did in that second term. He had a player on the outside. If he just hambled over the top, it was a yeah, shot on goal. Probably... A mistake, but under that pressure, trying a bit too hard to win it off his own bat. 
See a lot of wrestling going on under that bowl. Jack Miles couldn't bring it down. Angerson players on the bowl. He's wrapped up. Jackson Murphy's the last. No, Tom Ryan's the last one to get up. He hands the ball back to umpire Higginbottom. Higginbottom's had a good day. Can't really talk about any mistakes he's made. Wish I could. I was hoping he'd slip over in the mud for me, but he has not given the people what they want. See the ball. We'll have a boundary throw in on this near side, almost on the centre wing. That's a good throw in. Roberts was advantaged, but the ball comes down to Pisani. Pisani probably leading in the best player award at the moment. South smash that forward. Paddy White chasing it. Couldn't quite get to the ball before it goes out of bounds, so Angerson will get the free kick. They're out if they get the switch here. Dylan Schmidt now, he's They've looking for a target. He goes short. He finds the player. Good strong mark taken. Roberts now looked like a Frankenstein trying to chase down a villager there. I like that. <laughs> uh, it's not hard, not easy for us big blokes. Oh, As we gone. see, that player had no idea Jaden Antoni was behind him and just kept trying to run. Antoni tacked him up in a beautiful discipline tackle. The lines are back now, so it'll be harder to... Make their way. He goes forward. 50. He's got a guy. That's a mark taken under pressure. That's Jay Shannon. He bounces up. Probably lengths his distances beyond him with this wet footy. He's going to look for a target. South Gaul players are streaming back into the defensive 45 now. Shannon tries to go sideways. He finds his target there. Looks like Jack Miles has pressed forward. Distance-wise, he's probably got this in him, but doesn't take a lot of shots on goal. Not a renowned goal kicker. Not even in junior footy. The wind is favouring that side. There's almost no wind to speak of. Actually, I believe that the power may have come back on here at Angus. I'm thinking that one of the lights, Banks, is starting to come on. Yes. Maybe that one. Yes, a little I bit of power so. starting to come back. We'll have to get full. Well, we'll obviously so no. Minor score the there for Angus, and that's another one of their hopes gone. Looks like Josh Whitwin now is entrusted with the kicking duties. He's all class. He goes long. Doesn't take any chances. Didn't want the ball coming back over his head. So the umpire will ball it up. At half forward for the Panthers. Angerson with a kick forward. Ball goes out of bounds, so we'll have a boundary throw, and we're going to have a lot of this as the game peters out, I think, Nick. Yeah. South Gaul are just happy to shut this down now. They're not willing to give Angerson a sniff. And it's quite, um, it's quite different because uh, Angerson, that was there. That was their mantra for this game. They had to slow it down. So now a bit of the reverse is happening. That's smart football from the Lions. They've got a lot of veterans in their team. That's a beautiful pickup from Hood. He couldn't get rid of the ball before he was tackled. He dropped it. Could have been holding the ball. South Gawler picked it up. One thing I love about the Lions, you didn't hear any whinging from their players that it should have been a free kick. They don't whinge the umpires. They just play the game. Angerson now get the ball. Chain of handballs. They're going backwards. Now they drive it in. Praying for a mark. South are too disciplined. They're too good defensively. That ball bouncing around. South player takes it. He's taken down immediately. We'll have a ball up. Probably 35 metres from Angerson's goal. As we are almost 12 minutes into this final quarter here at Angerston. Really getting dark here now. Clouds are getting darker. Mm -hmm. 
Whitwer now storming through. He drives the ball along. He's putting his hand up for that medal. He knows he's a chance. Ball comes back. Anderson driving forward. That's a good mark taken down there. Dave Shannon again. He's desperately putting his hand up, saying, come with me, boys. I've got you. He finds Jake Hood, who's probably 45 metres from goal. He'll be kicking from outside 50. This could be beyond him. It should be beyond him with a wet footy. But what do you make of the Angerson playing coach, Jay Shannon, just trying to will his players into the game? Well, oh, he's missed that one. Just offline. They get, they've got the ball down there. They just need to convert at the moment. The problem is, is that the clock is ticking and the congestion and the stop South start. can just that's block right. it up now. It's the stop start, I think, that's really killing Angerson at the moment. We're now... He's going down that defensive wing. Angus and Mark come straight back in. And a beautiful lead from Jed Durden. He's taken that. Big kick. Very big kick. This is a huge kick in the context of this game. I'll let you call it, Nick. So 16 points in favour of the Lions. This brings it back to 10. Huge kick. So in he comes. About 30 metres out. It's high. And a straight. Goal umpire. He likes didn't it. have to do much. That is a beautiful goal, D Jed Durden. You are a superstar. And that's his third. Jed Durden, along with Jay Shannon, they're giving Angerson everything they can up forward at the moment. They're the only two players that look a chance to make something happen and make it happen they did. 10 points now the margin. Jed Durden with his third. He leads all goal scorers in this game. So again, we are um, emphasising on the clearances for Angerson. They need to keep punching it in. It's still wet. It's still drizzly. They've got to get it in. Lock it in. Tap there by Brody Hudson. Well, comes to the outer. Now, Jaden Antoni soccers that off the ground. Doesn't really go to anyone's advantage. And that's a sloppy push in the back there from Jake Hood. Didn't need to do that. So South with the free kick. They can afford just to chip the ball around for a bit now. He's taking his time. He's got the target he wanted. Into the middle of the ground. Pisani's one of the players on offer. The way he's been this half, I would give the ball to Pisani and just let the magic happen. The chance now for Angerston to move it forward. Angerson they want to move it quick. Tuck well. He quick goes hit. long. He's got a player. He pushes back off the mark. And he's going all the way to the goal square. That ball bounces around over the back. The back. Angerson player picks it up. He's got it. Puts it through. That looks like it was Alex Reinke. be correct. Big Alex Reinke, the centre half forward doing the crumbing at the back there. He read that beautifully. He didn't try and affect the contest. Yeah, it was. It was. He didn't try and affect the contest. That's smart play. Being a big fella, you'd think I'll go in and I'll impact this. He just stayed down, ran past the stoppage. That's right. This is game on here at Angus and Oval. Get excited, folks. If you're in front of your TV or if you're in front of your phone, get up, start pacing. Both teams could win this game now. 3-3 three, three to 1 straight in favour of Angerson this quarter. So up it goes. The tap down. 16 minutes into the final quarter the on tap. the Ray White Craig Montana. Here we go. That's a beautiful clearance. Jay Shannon driving the ball forward. No one able to mark. Ball comes to ground. Ground. Rush through. Rush through for a minor score. Brings the score back to three points. But importantly, it gives South Gaul a possession of the footy. They've got the ball now. This kick-in is going to be one of the biggest of the season. Everything on the line Which way for do you the go Panthers. aggressive? Do you go defensive? They're coming down this side of the ground, which is a little surprising. Roberts was worked out of that before the ball got there. South with that kick. Jack Miles under it. He takes a courageous captain's mark. He goes quickly. He's got a player out. And he ball comes beats him. He picks it up, kicks forward. No mark, but that ball oh. kicked off the deck.
Ball's in dispute. Rain coming in. Rain's it's coming in, getting heavier now. This is what we were, we were hopeful we wouldn't cop all day. The players are now running. <laughs> spectators are now running for shelter. Toughen up down there, folks. <laughs> Not that bad. Some of the greats of the game here. Jack Callender, former South Gore president. See the ball probably 45 metres from goal with the ball up now. South win that tap. Doesn't go to anyone. See a bit of aerial ping pong. Ball kicked out of, off the ground. South Gaul are marked. That's important. They've got the chance to take a breath now. They can't they waste time. They go long down the outer side. They're not in that territory yet. That's a big, strong mark taken out there. That's important. Dean Cunningham. He just calms things down. He goes back. No, I'm going to think about this a little bit more. Umpire calls in to play on. They understand the theatre of the game. Anderson have to get numbers back. They've got to repossess yes. the football. Paddy White screaming for the ball deep in the forward line. He goes for it now. He's at the back. Couldn't take the mark. Anderson get the ball, get it out, and drive the ball forward now. Um, South oh. Gawler player spilled the mark off his chest. No, it's paid the mark. Comes into the middle of the ground. He's got a player there. They're playing smart footy now. He's got Jackson Dare. He goes, he's looking for Pisani. He finds him. Pisani, superstar. He's been great this half. Looking for Paddy White. That's spoiled by Fiebiger. The ball goes out of bounds. A boundary throw in. Absolutely everything is on the line for Angerston. This is an elimination final for them, so a loss will completely wipe them out from... Any chance of finals. Ball comes in. Chris James gets the tap down. And the players just dive upon it. So we'll have a ball up in almost exactly the same spot. They've got the spare back as well, the Panthers. No players out on this wing. This is where the ball could clear to. Ball comes down south with that ball. Cutting's flying for it. He had his name all over that. Came to ground, though. Angerson player tried to kick it out. He smothered immediately. That mark taken. That's courageous. He comes out to this wing. He's got players on. Murphy now grabs it. He goes on the left. He kicks it into open space. Fallon in the pursuit, as is Reinke. South Gawler players happy to see that ball over the line. They're really happy with it. The boundary was their friend on that occasion. It looks like a free kick being paid in Angerston's favour. I know. Throw in. I believe. I think he's just got enough on that to just get there in time to clear it. Okay. I wasn't sure which way he was signalling there. It was a little confusing. Ball clears the ruck contest. Goes out the back. No one able to pick it up cleanly. They're taken down. So we'll have a ball up. It's almost directly in front of Angerson's goal. We're probably 30, 35 metres from goal. Real danger territory for the Lions. Ball comes to Will Falland. He spun around and kicks it towards the goal. South player grabs it. He's wrapped up in a big tackle. Let go of the footy. I think an Angerson player was able to grab it, but he's wrapped up straight away. Is it too Players early? are really aware they can't afford to let a player pick the ball up. Is it too early to call next goal wins? Next goal does win, I'm sorry, Nick. That's All a right. cliche and I love it, but next goal is the game. Angston player had the ball. He was tackled. And then after the whistle blew, he was driven into the ground. They've still got time, Angston. they just going to keep it locked in. Can they go now? Bustling around. And I think... Oh, it's come out. But it's going out Don't for a boundary so throw-in. Throw in. Almost in front of the scoreboard here at Angston. It's very tight, this game. Nearly 21 and a half minutes into the final quarter. Won't be a lot of time on in this last quarter. <laughs> no. 
South Gawler pick it up now. They've got the ball in the clear. Into the middle of the ground. They've got a player on. That's Filky. That has Bailey kept, Filky in the middle of the that ground. That has kept Angerston in the game. If he takes the mark, they've got numbers out yes. the back. That is such an important Desperation defence there. Miles unable to pick that ball up. So the umpire will ball it up again. Solid ground under the player's feet in this part of the ground. They'll be happy with that. No one able to get to it. Miles was being held. The umpire's pulled out a free kick. Interesting stage of the game to do that. He goes long. South player was in front. He picks it up. Got he the kicks. Numbers. That little ship kick. Finds Bassani who juggles it. I thought it was a mark. Umpire didn't pay it. Might have found some grass. Ball forward now for the Lions. Oh, good mark. That's a good mark. Desperation stuff. He's on the boundary. He's going to be taking the shot. He oh, he's come on, around. Runs around. Oh, oh, hang on. It's a goal. Dean cutting oh, with the on. mark. We've just got to confirm. I think it may have hit the post. No, I'm not sure. Dean Cutting hit the it post did. himself. I think what's happened is, is he's juggled the ball. And as he's juggled it, it has hit the post. So in that, that circumstance... That is the theatre of football, ladies and gentlemen. It, that looked a like a great mark. A game-winning mark from Dean Cutting. Unfortunately... He's juggled it into the post. Probably the story of his day. He's had a not-quite day. At least he didn't kick that one for a point. That ball, Angerson attacking down the middle of the ground. Great mark taken by Chris James. That could be enough to... Shut them down. He'll take his time now. He goes back. He's thinking about it. Ruckman don't think real quick. That's a horrible kick, but it comes off. Finds it Jackson can't, Press. Can't be that bad if it finds someone lays out. <laughs> How would you have described it? I would describe it as a fortunate accident. <laughs> nice. So we have a ball in probably 15 metres around from South Gawler's goal. I say there's less than two minutes now for Angerston, so we're almost it's in the time, time on. to roll the dice. Miles now chases that. He kicks it around the corner, finds clear grass. Callan Loki picked it up and he's run straight into a man and he's thrown over the boundary line. It's got to be less than a minute left in this game. I would love to know how long is left. <laughs> Uh, it takes away it takes away the uh, the surprise of of the count up clock. South Gawler player grab the ball. He's taken down in a tackle. He got rid of it. That handball forward bounces to cutting. He takes it one handed. That little chip oh, very kick around. Smart. Unselfish. This is the game right here. This is it. He had every right to try and spin around and kick that as a key forward and the leading goal kicker in the competition. But he was disciplined. He saw a teammate. He goes. I'm winning as a team. It's not all about me. And in turn, it will cement this match. If he kicks it. I think the 30 seconds is going to do a lot more damage. Yes, he's taking his time. There it's it is. It. That's the one that will win this game for South Gawler. That will secure the Blue and White Cup for the Lions. There can't be much longer left now. We've got a final score from Tanunda. Tanunda, 13 goal, 9, 67. Taking down Williston, 4 goal, 8, 32 on the Birds Barossa scoreboard. I think you said that was a two or three goal game at halftime as well. So mm -hmm. another poor finish by uh, Williston. Yes, Williston sees him just unravelling week by week. As we see this ball going forward again for the Lions. And they work that. Josh Whitwer. Goal. Oh. Phenomenal goal. There he is. And he, he pulls the Gens out and shows the logo to the fans. He's a really proud lion. He's a really proud man. He's a great leader of this footy club. 
It's a great role model for the young players, especially their young Indigenous players. He's a proud Indigenous man, and he has become a real leader at this footy club since coming to them. And that's a fantastic finish. He, uh, that, that's who enough you, to secure him as best on ground. I was just about to ask, who would you have, either him or Pisani? He's slightly ahead because he's finished off with those goals. It's kicked that okay. couple of goals. I'd have to give you that. <laughs> I'd have to give he's you also that. one of my favourites. I have to admit that. He throws me under the bus at times. A free kick paid for holding on there. Probably a little soft. Probably not what's required at this stage of this game. But Angus and driving the ball forward. South Gawler defending really well. Angus would get the ball. That was a throw. Umpire saw it. And such an... It's a cruel way for it's this game It's a cruel game. game. It was a little throw. Benny Antoni had a, such a great first half. If he'd gotten away with that, it would have been ideal for Angerson, but the game is about being fair. Such a cruel way for Angerson to finish this game. They've fought so hard, shown so much courage. But South Gawler now got the ball. They're streaming forward. Paddy White. The ball's cut off by Pisani. Pisani now, he's got the run. He's pushed out the way. Almost a free kick. He's fighting for it. That ball goes forward. Big Paddy White, the chimp. He gets the goal. That's over now. And that's a reward for a defender to go forward and just get that lazy goal at the end. That usually happens in a blowout, though, not in a tight game like this. <laughs> but they've kicked the, the last three goals, uh, South Gawler. So, well, they've finished this game that off. That shows very, why they're such this, a good football team. This they second have not half, stopped. This second half from the Lions it just showed why they are the clear and outright premiership favourite. I think what it is is that their level of intensity has not dropped from the opening bounce. They were being outplayed, but their intensity level has not dropped once. I think the pressure just became a little bit too much for the Panthers. Yes, and when you're a team and you're fighting against it, you're under man, your best player, Summerton, goes off with a possibly season-ending injury. You know, you're <coughs> as that's it. That's the season over. Josh Whitwer raises his arms in the air in triumph. That's a big win for South Gawler. That's a character-building win late in the year. It, they could have easily written that game off. Oh, it's the one we needed to lose. That would have been a cop-out. They have really played this game out the way that true champion teams do. We're not dropping this game. We're not going to go with that old rule of you need to drop one before the finals. Tough luck. We're better than that. And good teams find a way to win ugly. They, they have do. to find ways to win ugly. Perfect case was today. And, wow, Pisani and <laughs> Whit were... What an incredible performance by both of those. Pisani in the third quarter, when that's they sparked the five goals in that quarter. Whitworth, and second then Whitworth. quarter, third quarter and fourth quarter. So he was brilliant across those last three, and he dragged his team kicking and screaming to victory. What a phenomenal game. So the, the Lions will roll on in first position with a healthy percentage and staying a game clear at least. But they become a little bit more vulnerable. So... We'll see how uh, some of the teams will be playing in the finals. I'll probably be looking at this footage saying, you know, what can we do better that Angerson didn't and uh, what work that we're going to use. So, Absolutely. They will pick this apart. And I don't think they can find a weakness in the Lions. Angerson managed to get some things going their way. But I don't think there's uh, one area that you can pick on that the Lions are vulnerable in. No. Well, it's been proven time and time again, week after week. But um, a strong finish by the Lions, and uh, it was a valiant effort by uh, the Panthers to take it up to the best team. Yes, it was a great effort, and that's where we'll have to leave you here from the Angerson Oval. Unfortunately, with the battery power, we don't have enough to get us through just at the moment. So thank you for joining us, Nick. You've been brilliant once again. We'll look forward to seeing you again later in the year. Back next week. Yes. Look forward to it. Next week, we're coming to you from Gawler Central. Thank you.